Woohoo! Wait. Hello there, everybody. Tell me your name. Kate Mouch. Kate Mouch is the co proprietor of Grindhouse, which is a. It's not even a coffee. It's a. It's a cultural emporium. It is a. It, no, no, it's true. Look at that. I've met, I've talked to a bunch of the people. Oh, no, wait. Wait, I have talked to a bunch of people in this restaurant, and they're the cool, a minister, a guy who resells iron. I talked to a woman who runs a special needs uh, out. I mean, it's like. Just about everybody. Yeah, not your not your grandma's uh, coffee house. Um, okay, wait. Your brother? Where's your brother? James. Where's he? Oh, there he is. Come say hi to Periscope. Hi, Periscope. I don't know what Periscope is. Periscope is a live feed right now. Fifty people are watching us. Wow. Right. So Sean's at my cafe. Yeah. Tell talk, tell me about your cafe, Grindhouse. It's um, called. Yeah, Cafe Grindhouse in Northwest Indiana, Griffith. Um, bunch of bleeding heart liberals. <gasps> um, it's outrageous. Um, we, uh, wait, wait, yeah. look, wait, look. You got a burning supporter got over a burning here. Supporter. Yeah, I'm a Hillary <laughs> supporter. We've got Trump headquarters down the street. Do we? Okay, so we're right in. We're um, in America. We're in America. We're in America. <laughs> uh, yeah. Does anybody have anything they need to say? Hi, you guys. We've totally taken over the co the cafe. Wait, hold on. People, wait. Hi, new people. Is it okay that I interrupt you? Hey, that guy's new. I know him. I know him. How are you? I'm Sean. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Okay, ready? We're doing a little thing here. We're doing it. We're doing a selfie. Okay. So, are you are you guys voters? I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. You're a Lord of the Rings voter. <laughs> Samwise Gamgee for mayor. He he already gets to be mayor. Hi, yes, I know I'm you, Becca. I'm trying to figure out if I'm registered. You're going to figure out whether you want to go or not. Where I'm registered at. Where you're registered? I believe I Indiana is open, isn't it? I've been lit. Yeah. Indiana's open, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you get you no party or does party doesn't matter. Please, I thought it was Porter County. Six to six tomorrow. So I'm trying to figure out. You have to figure out what your polling place is. Yeah, yeah. How does she do that? I think it's IndianaVoters.com. Okay. Uh, really? But there's a state. Yeah, pretty sure it's IndianaVoters. Sign up for Hillary. They they yeah, tweet the, out. Hillary also has an app where you can, find you can just location. click on the link and you type in your zip code. Yeah. Um, should be a big button. That says do you know who you're gonna vote for? Valpo. Are you a Valpo girl? You did? My wife went to, uh, uh, well, am I allowed to say? She went to Indiana. Yeah. IU. Oh. IU PY. Ewey I'm getting my master's there. You are? In? Uh, social work. Social work. See, that's what I'm telling you. This grindhouse is like the, can I say badass? It's my periscope. So I can say, this is a badass cafe. All right. I like that guy over there. He's really cool. He sell, he's reselling iron. Do you just make a sale? Steal. Steal? You just make a steal sale? Steal for uh, cars. Do you guys know who you're voting for? Um, no. You don't? Ooh, I'm going to make a sale. <laughs> you are? Okay, there you go. You got a button. You could give me a spiel if you want. I'll give you a spiel. Okay, hold on. I'm going to give her my spiel. All right, I got it. Right. This is what they call retail politicking. And it's not really what we're supposed to do today. Today is about GOTV. Okay. Get out the vote. Meaning, find the Hillary supporters. direction I agree with. Um, what's Talk important? about Hillary and mental health. Oh, I know. Uh, no, well, not like Andy. Okay, so my mom, Patty Duke, who just passed away about a month ago, was a famous bipolar sufferer. And uh, she, all in the 80s and 90s, she was always, um, she wrote a couple of best-selling books about her condition, and she was always a kind of go-to and national voice whenever there were issues, you know, some terrible thing that happened. Larry King would have Larry O'Hemingway and my mom, and Ross and Carter on the, on the, the show. But anyhow, um, when she passed away, the outpouring, millions of people talking about how special her work was. So anyhow, I got to go to um, the debate, the last Democratic debate in New York, the night before the New York primary. And during the debate, health care, uh, mental, mental health care didn't come up specifically in the debate. But afterwards, um, Hillary and the, and the governor, or the mayor of New York, came over to this like watch party that we're at. And she stood up and gave, you know, she just basically had this incredible debate. But she came out there and there was maybe, I don't know, 2,000 bus. And she just talked a lot about how important mental health care was and that it didn't get to come up in the debate and how, and she went into a list of things that she really wanted to be on the agenda. So, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, for, for it, it, it's, since my mom's passing, I've decided to try and help 
put a foundation together to continue her work in the mental health space. So there's so many, there's so much, you know, advocacy and there's legislation and there's awareness stuff and there's, you know, even having hotlines and like we're just trying to figure out what we want to do. But um, yeah, but one one of the things that kind of grabs all the headlines is every time there's a mass murder and they talk about gun control and then there's also this other side about how, uh, you know, if there's better men mental health services, uh, maybe that would reduce the amount of gun violence. So um, I find it annoying because there's a whole lot of people who are nowhere near the shooting people thing who need services. Now they have to climb out from under the stigma that's associated with yeah, that. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. So I'm really happy that Hillary makes a point to talk about it and include um, the need for those kind of services in the agenda. So I don't know specifically how they afford the care deal with that, but she's at least talking about it and it feels real to me. Yeah. What do you think? Well, how I've heard it described, I don't think you can. I've heard it described that Bernie is very, very radical and Hillary is more able to get more people on her side for a lot of the same issues, but just a less radical way. That's how I've heard it described. I think that's Which a, may, helps helps me make sense of it. I would say that Senator Sanders is not radical. Okay. Okay. I think that Senator Sanders is awesome. I like him a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think he's very idealistic. Okay. To me, so maybe that's a better word than radical. Well, some people say radical, some people say idealistic. To me, as I look at the the playing field, if you will, if I, as I look at the conversation, it seems to come down to uh, with with Bernie, with Trump, with everybody. People can't just be ruled by executive fiat. It has to get through the legislation. Yeah, through, yeah. So the question is, who is most likely able to push through an agenda that reflects the values that you're interested in? Yeah. With Hillary, 450 plus legislators came out right when she started, the so-called superdelegates. Yeah, yeah. You know how the superdelegates work? Yeah. You want to know? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's... I'm, I'm a bad citizen. No, no. Well, this is it. No. Being approached by an advocate, and then I'll share with you, and then you'll decide whether I'm crazy or whether you like it. <laughs> so this, the superdelegate thing, some people say it's totally undemocratic, because how can... Um, oh. Okay, okay, yes, 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 keep going. I, I agree with it. Sean, we got a Periscope follower who said, I'm still not sure who to vote for because neither one of them are speaking to my agenda. What's our agenda? I don't know, what, what is your agenda, Periscope follower? Periscope follower? Okay, I'll keep you, I'll right keep now you you're about to get the best description of superdelegates you've ever had. Better than anything you see on television. Not really, but it could be good. So basically, the Democratic Party is an organization. And it sounds stupid, but it's important to remember that it's like, it's not a corporation, but it's a group. Mm -hmm. And our group has rules. Yes. And if you want to run as a Democrat, and Senator Sanders has acknowledged just as recently as yesterday with the National Press Club, that he understands the rules and he agrees to go with the rules. In order to get the elected officials to come to the convention, basically once every four years they have the national party, the national convention. And what is it? It's a chance for like-minded Democrats to come together and celebrate our common agenda, to build, to shape it, and to celebrate it, and to celebrate each other. Each elected Democratic congressional representative, governor, senator, former presidents, uh, get one vote. And their vote is meant to represent the entire constituency that they represent. Okay. There are also some Democratic Party officials, the head of the Democratic Party and some others who get a vote. And you can think about that when you want to think about it. But basically, you'll have, say, a county of 100,000 people, and they send one delegate. Okay. Okay, and then you've got a super delegate. All right, has Periscope. We need to go to Creative Comics soon. We're going to Creative Comics. Oh, so so. But we're going to learn about super delegates for a few more minutes. They're representing right. their constituents. Okay, so they're representing a larger group. They're representing their out, group. To, okay, their larger group. But look, so so no, I want to. I'm just saying. Okay. Seven seconds. Pledge delegates. That means if I vote in Griffin and Hillary wins and we get our delegate, that delegate is a pledged delegate. They go to the convention and they have to vote for who they were sent to vote for, at least on the first ballot. They're a pledged delegate. The super delegates can vote for whoever they want for, want to. 
Now there's, I think, 2,400 or more, uh, or maybe 4,000 pledged delegates available. And there's like 500 super delegates. My numbers are a little off, but, but so right now it's a race to see who can get to the majority. There's a line that says you have got 51% of the pledged delegates. Yes. And there, and Hillary is 300 plus closer to the to the finish line, and she needs 200 more. So right. what that does is it means that's pretty close. Indiana becomes really important. And uh, and then there's just a few. There's like nine others after Indiana. But anyhow, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Does it? I I, I did know about it. I just don't know the names of the it's not your job. I think citizens are supposed to know, pay as close attention as you can for a little bit of time, and then you vote for somebody, and hopefully they go off and do the right thing. Yeah. And I think this, what's weird about this movie is people are just ready to you know, explode the system. Like, they just, they think that it's so corrupt, it's so um, non-responsive to the needs of the people that they're willing to vote in people who are interested in totally changing it. So, and it's an appealing concept, except that it's really hard to build a system. And the, the basic framework of what we have can work, but the citizens have to send people to the government who want to make it work. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm not one of those who thinks that the system needs to be took. I agree that... Yeah, Bernie is against the system. Well, he, sure. just, he thinks that... Um, Which I tend to be as well. I am too. But also, realistically, you're right. Right. Someone has to be in who can get Congress on their side, right? Did yes. I say that right? Yes. Okay. You can you can do no wrong. You're a citizen. The fact you're even thinking about it for a second means that you're like. I have to think about it. It affects the people I work with. Okay. Well, me too, but also. All of us. Yeah. Sean, do you ready to spread the word of Creative Comics? I don't know. The I feel like I've almost got her. <laughs> almost got her. What do you guys so, think, Periscope? What do you think? <laughs> I think I give myself like a C on this little thing, but I was kind of nervous because of Periscope. Um, oh, me too. You forgot what was happening. You're good at this, though. I am? Are you? I'm better than I am at this. Can you do your job? Well, being on camera? Yeah, I can do that. I can be on camera. What about you? Thoughts? Questions? Concerns? Comments? Come on. Oh my gosh, I feel like I pulled you into this. Oh, we got a C plus on Periscope. Go, Sean. For Ted Cruz? Because of a social a plus a plus plus yeah. plus. Well, All right, guys, we're getting a lot of A pluses. We're getting a lot of A pluses. A lot of A pluses. Should we cool over our head or should we go to Creative Comics? Uh, we're cool. <laughs> She's gonna vote for Senator Cruz. All right. This one's gonna vote for undecided. Still undecided. <laughs> It's been, there's research. been like a year of yeah. debates and like I what are you watching waiting? the debates? They're in the it's a show. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you take a serious look at Senator uh, Secretary Clinton yeah. and uh, she's on the floor. You know. And if you sometimes if you just, you just I have ask the, for, the, ask the oracle. <laughs> All right. Thank you. My hands are sweaty. Nice to see you. Okay. Off to the comic book store. Bye.